everyone, it's John Pinton with your Vancouver Real Estate Update for the month of August. The stats for July were just released this morning and I'm going to share those stats with you shortly and break that all down for you. Um, this is a very important video today I'm going to share with you so you please like the video to get it into the YouTube al algorithm to let everyone know in Vancouver about what's going to happen this fall and going into the winter. Um, very interesting um, insight I have for you right now to share um, what I tell my buyers right now. So I have several buyers on the sidelines and I'm being honest with them. The price, it's a great time to buy right now. You can negotiate a lot off the purchase price, particularly detached homes in the suburbs and also um, even here in Vancouver. I have some crazy sales figures to show you later in the video today. But basically what I'm telling them is that uh, we're going to have this short window of opportunity where we can really take advantage of the interest rate hikes where people are going to be in a pinch come this fall pending the interest rate hikes um, that are expected September 7th again in October 26 and then again possibly one more early December but um, there is hints that the interest rate hikes might not be as severe this fall as once thought um, down in the states, in, uh, they are in a recession now. GDP has gone down the last two quarters, and inflation might have peaked as well. What I uh, mentioned in my last video, gas prices, if you've seen in the city of Vancouver, are down to a dollar eighty-nine, and lumber prices have actually come down a lot too. Um, and then gas prices coming down, that's going to bring the cost of our food down as well. So. Maybe not, it won't show up in the figure for August, August 16th, but we're going to have our next inflation report. Um, people have been traveling a lot, so it might not come down sh yet, but once September hits, we might have a leveling off, and so they might not have to increase the rates as severe as once believed um, in the next one in October. And even September, it might not be uh, 50, 75 basis points. What happens if everyone gets caught off guard and it's just a 25 basis point hike? Um, in September. So everyone that I'm working with right now, they're not buying. However, I've told them if it is a 25 basis point hike in September, that's going to signal a massive shift in the sentiment of which way the Bank of Canada will be going uh, this fall and into the winter. So um, keep a, I'm going to keep a close eye on what's happening obviously for you uh, come this fall. And then really the another major thing that a lot of people don't realize is that um, it's a wonderful opportunity to buy this fall. Um, everyone thinks that oh, price is just going to keep dropping, but there's big, big hints uh, that they might start cutting rates by March and April next year. So we're going to have this short window where um, there's negative sentiment in the media and whatnot, especially leading up to Christmas. And uh, this is a time when investors are going to have to sell off some properties where they are being affected by the variable rates. So a lot of investors are on HELOCs, home equity line of credits, and they are in a pinch right now where they're on a floating rate and their their uh, monthly payments are going up severely right now. Um, most uh, payments on variable are just paying interest and not principal as well. So we're going to hit trigger points this fall, even for first time home buyers. So there's a lot of um, negative energy in the real estate market uh, right now, um, but we will be seeing a transition by January, February, where I do foresee it becoming more positive with the outlook of interest rate hikes or interest rate cuts coming by uh, March, April, which is being anticipated in the markets. Furthermore, um, I'm also uh, telling all my buyers that, hey, just think about it. Uh, logically, for a second here, in all my experience in real estate, I always see distressed sellers in the fall. Um, there's no reason to be selling your place in September, October. Why do you want to sell in September and move out in the cold, rainy winter months of November, December, January? No one really wants to do that. So there's always a valid reason why people sell in the fall. So that's going to lead to more distressed sales this fall, uh, October, November, December. Um, and people will be... Uh, more open to negotiation I find uh, in the fall winter months specifically November when people list in September uh, they'll wait a couple months and they'll drop the price down in November and then early December as well but what we also see is that people take the mark the house off the market by the middle of December then the inventory drops very low severely low as you saw this last winter there was no homes for sale in January and I'm gonna get into the stats today shortly and it's a little alarming the, the inventory levels have actually decreased for the month of July. 
um, about one and a half percent. And, and I think, uh, I'll just get right to it for that. Um, the listings, the amount of listings, uh, I think are down 25% since June. So that's a really alarming. A lot of people weren't listing this summer. And, and so people obviously know the people that don't need to sell aren't going to sell. So, but there's still going to be uh, distressed sales this fall. And I have a few of them to share with you today in the video. Uh, once we get past the stats here for the month of July um, for the real estate board of Vancouver. So um, let's get right to it. The sales were down 43% um, overall, uh, including detached, attached, and condos. However, houses were down 50%, townhomes were down 50%, condos were down 36%, which lowered the average amount of sales for the month of July. Sales were also down 35% uh, over on the 10 year average, uh, which is basically the lowest July in the last 20 years. So not surprised here all, as well. Everyone um, that I talk to is traveling. No one's talking about real estate. You go to the restaurant, bar, you don't hear about real estate right now. And that's what I was predicting what would happen. And, and it's coming to fruition as we foresaw a few months ago. So anyways, um, yeah, talking about the sales to active ratio, uh, anything below 12% is pressure on prices to go down. Anything above 20% is uh, pressure on prices to go up. And every every uh, update video in the past three or four months, the sales to active ratios have been coming down from 70%, uh, 50%, 40%. And now where are we at now? Um, for houses, we have come down to 11.8%. So we're officially uh, in negative territory where prices are officially gonna be going down for houses. But I'll show you in some sales figures, we're, some of them are, are 20% down, not not 11%. Uh, 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 so, I oh, don't, no, sorry, not 11%. Anyways, uh, townhomes are also, uh, sales to active ratio is 20% right now. So, we're just on the edge of uh, prices falling to a balanced territory. Condos are at 24.5%. So, they're, they're also falling as well. And they uh, will soon be in balanced territory. But in all, all segments of the, the market, uh, mostly, at least the lower mainland, we're seeing prices fall in all brackets, houses, townhomes, and condos. Um, but anyways, overall, uh, house prices were down 2.8% for the month of July. Condos were down 1.5%. Townhomes were down 1.7%. So we're really seeing, starting to see some big drops here, which is kind of exciting. Um, people didn't really believe prices were dropping, but these figures are really showing that we are seeing some drops in prices, um, which is all expected with interest rate hikes. People just can't afford as much. And when people need to sell, they're going to have to take a discount. Um, anyways, current listings right now we have are 10,288. But as I mentioned just br uh, brief, uh, previously here, 1.3% uh, lower than June and 24.7% decrease in listings in July compared to June. So let's see what, where we go for August. I'm sure it'll be probably another 25% lower. Um, but then September, the listing should creep up, hopefully. Um, but let's see where, where, where that goes. Anyways, um, big numbers for price decreases. Uh, Bernie B South, minus 7.2%. Minus 7.2. That is an alarming stat for detached houses. That's a big drop. Tawasson, also minus 5.5%. Um, that's a big one as well. I'm seeing many homes more like 15% drops. Houses that were selling for 1.8 million in Tawasson are going down to around 1.5 million. And then uh, Vancouver East is showing up now. Um, so minus 4.2%. But I have a house to show you that is uh, much higher than minus 4%. Pitt Meadows minus 3.9%. And Whistler, uh, the best uh, showing city in the Lower Mainland, or it's not the Lower Mainland, but the Real Estate Board of Vancouver. It, it's a drop of minus 0.1%. So Whistler's faring pretty well actually uh, so far, but let's see where that goes. And the, the top pick for the last three months uh, of decrease is Pitt Meadows and Port Coquitlam. They're both tied at minus 9.3% overall, overall, but we're seeing 25, 30% drops for some of these homes out in Poco, uh, Maple Ridge, Pitt Meadows area. And those were the cities that I was mentioning mostly in the top three just a few months ago. Anyways, townhomes, Poco's taking a big hit. Uh, minus 6.7% uh, for the month of July, minus 11.3% in the past three months. 
An average price for a townhome now in Poco is at 915,000. Maple Ridge is not far behind, minus 4.9% for the month of July, minus 10% overall in the last three months. So it's not looking good if you bought um, in January, February in Poco Quill and Maple Ridge. But um, it's all okay because interest rates will level off this winter and you're on a, a, a you most likely locked in at a low interest rate hike. And as long as you haven't lost your job, you just hold on to that property and don't sell. So um, it's it's so it's alarming when you see that your prices drop right now because the market's always been going up. But it is expected the economy with the recession is going to have to level off and interest rate hike, uh, cuts will come um, by next spring. Um, anyways, Burnaby North minus 4% uh, as well. And then Sunshine Coast and Squamish are bucking the trend. They're actually up 0.4% and 0.9%. So yet the remaining buyers that are left are all flooding to Sunshine Coast and Squamish for now. But I expect by August those numbers should be minus territory. But let's see what happens. Uh, for condos, Ladner minus 4.2%. Uh, decrease, Twas and minus 4.1%. So we're seeing some big drops, obviously, in the suburbs for condos. And minus nine, minus two point nine percent for Whistler. So Whistler is not gaining away um, in terms of the condo decreases, at least. Okay, now we've come to the recent sales that I have to share with you today. Um, obviously, everyone knows the suburbs have been dropping dramatically the last three months, but Vancouver has been holding strong, pretty stable. But I'm going to show you some deal deals that are actually occurring um, because the condo market really never went up too much. Uh, crazily the, over the past two years, like the townhomes in Detached and Maple Ridge and Tawasson, etc. But I'm going to share with you some examples um, of a condo that actually sold below assessment, downtown Vancouver, uh, on July 20, 26. So this was just a couple days ago. Uh, address 1506 488 Helmkin Street. The condo was built in 1995, asking price 810000 just sold for 825,000. However, assessment value 870,000. So we're seeing a 5% drop below assessment value. So this is a distressed sale. Something's going on here. Um, inflation has increased rents. So I don't know why they sold below uh, assessment value, but investors are getting pinched because they just can't afford these massive increases in the variable rate. So people are letting go of their properties. And we are seeing some deals in downtown uh, for condos right now. This one uh, came out at 974 square feet uh, per square foot. So under a thousand, which is pretty solid for downtown. And this is a great location, 48 Helmkin, just up by Davy Street on the western front of downtown Vancouver. Um, Gastown is actually uh, really not sought after right now due to the homeless population and crime over there. But western side, West End, Yieldtown is still pretty strong. Um, and then, but also comparing, if you go across the bridge, across Falls Creek, over to Granville uh, Island area, I have a condo sale here, 508, 1425 West 6th Avenue, um, built in 2000, two bedroom, two bath. And this one was asking 1.15, it just sold for 1.1 million, assessment 933,000. So we are seeing quite a spread in terms of uh, higher higher prices across the bridge uh, away from downtown but i expect downtown condo prices to increase as more people go back to work we are seeing more of a hybrid model again in downtown vancouver there are way more people going back to the office so um, i do expect the downtown condos to catch up to olympic village kitsilano granville island area um, over the, the fall and winter months but it is uh, a big spread right now um, between the two-bedroom condos downtown in Olympic Village. Um, another one uh, to share with you is Mount Pleasant area, 206-2520 Manitoba Street, two-bed, two-bath, built in 2007. Asking price was 998000 just sold for nine sixty-five. dollars Assessment, 887000 so 100000 over the assessment value still. So um, we're not seeing a crazy drop um, for all condos, but still below the asking price at least uh, coming in at 986 per square foot and this is in the broadway manitoba street corridor so not quite olympic village which is a little more expensive but um, still a solid area with the sky train coming in it will increase in value along the broadway corridor and then last but not least um, i 
I almost fell off my seat when I saw this stat, this uh, sale today. Uh, it's a local sale, but one of our realtors at the office uh, location just by Riley Park. If, if you're familiar with the area, it's a beautiful area. I live in the neighborhood um, right by Nat Bailey Stadium, Queenie Park. Uh, this address is at 453 East 31st Avenue. It is one block from Main Street, built in 1950, a two bedroom, one bath, bungalow. Um, anyways, these houses were selling for 1.9 to 2 million. These teardown houses back in January, February, early March. Developers were just chewing at the bit to get to buy these teardown homes. However, we've seen a definite, definite shift. And a lot of these homes have just been hanging on the market, not selling. A lot of the people just want the prices what their neighbors got. But we are starting to see some people drop dramatically. And this one was asking 1.499. And someone came in, got a great deal, 1.55. 50,000 over, but 400,000 roughly less than what people were paying back in uh, just a few months ago in February. So this guy, this developer, or, or it could be a young couple that just want to hold and buy or hold and wait and develop the property themselves in the future. Um, because yeah, the assessment value is 1.7, so we're 150,000 below the assessment value and 400,000 below the market value just from a few months ago. This sale was just uh, on July 20th, so this is a very recent sale. Um, so yeah, looking at 20% drop for East Vancouver homes, not all of them. They're not all going to be dropping 20%. It just depends on the situation of the seller. But the further we go into the fall, the more desperate people will become. So. Um, if you are a buyer, very exciting times. We're all we're almost there where I will be starting to advise you to start getting into the market and to buy, especially um, after September 7th. Uh, we'll have a better idea. If they do uh, increase at 50 basis points, I will probably say hold off until October, November. But if it's a 25 basis point hike, which is possible, you never know, um, all hands on deck uh, September to December because the shift, the shift will happen January in February with the media and attention to uh, negative or rate cuts happening by the spring, at least a leveling off. So there will be um, a good window to get negotiating on um, some properties where people are just not being able to afford the monthly payments anymore with these increases that have gone up so much since the month of March. So we're at 2.5% now. We Who knows, maybe we'll go up to 3.5% by October. And that's when you're going to want to get in right when it's hurting the most for um, people that really need to sell because you think about it no one needs, wants to sell in the fall especially when it gets wet and rainy and our cold dark winter months of october november december but um, hope you found this of value share this with all your friends like it down below leave a question uh, in the comment section i'll try to get back to you going away on vacation to Tofino, uh, but i will try to get to it as soon as i can uh, hope you have a great week and i'll see you soon